Hey guys, a very good morning. Thank you for joining with us. My name is TM Pradeep Kumar Naidu and we are here to represent Nikit Engineers which is into welding from the past 42 years and uh, the kind of knowledge that we have gained over the past 42 years we would like to share it with you guys to solve a much complicated problems of welding and simplify the entire process. So let's see what we're going to solve today. Hey guys. So the problem that we are solving today is of weighing scale welding automation. Basically, what are weighing scale frames? These frames are used to build the bottom most layer of any weighing scale. For example, the kind of frame that you are looking at right now is a typical frame of about 500 mm in width and about 600 mm in length. So these frames are made of tubes, basically, or uh, either a square tube or a rectangular tube, hardly from 1 mm thick to 3 mm thick. So the corners or the joints that uh, are placed to form this rectangular or square profile are being welded through this particular automation. So let's find out how we incorporate our concept and build a particular machine to weld such a frame. So we are looking at uh, the final design concept that we uh, managed to design for this particular application where the first thing that you can observe here is the uh, frame itself or the component that is being welded it is being clamped in our fixture these are rectangular tubes I'll just zoom in for you guys so with the fixture base frame what we have done here is given a option of 700 by 700 base plate that is of aluminium and then made a solid fixture where you can align your components or the frame components of the weighing scale and position them together with these uh, micro aligning uh, spaces then lock it up with our misumi clamps yeah we generally use misumi clamps because the life of the clamps is really really good so talking about the axis now when we talk about the axis these are proportionate to the component size when I when we have uh, initially when we've talked about a plan to make a base frame or uh, the base plate of any fixture close to 700 by 700 or 700 by 500, we proportionally take or consider the axis stroke of any system. The machine that we have considered here is a profile welder. Basically, it's a Cartesian model where you can see an x-axis for you guys that's the x-axis and the stroke of x-axis is close to one meter and this is y-axis the stroke of y-axis is close to 500 mm and there is z-axis the z-axis stroke is about 250 mm now as you can see the component that we are welding today is about 500 by 600 500 in width and 6 in length but the height that you can observe here does not exceed beyond 50 mm though it doesn't exceed beyond 50 mm we have given a stroke for z axis close to 250 mm so that components up to 100 mm in height can be welded in this particular model now as you can see all the motors are stepper and are covered with sheet metal and the end sensor and limit sensors are all the slot sensors we have also provided a wire feeder frame basically the entire system gets incorporated with your welding power source for this project the company which uh, we were trying to uh, negotiate or discuss about this this particular model they had their own welding machine so we were only integrating their welding machine so to integrate those welding any welding machine what we generally do is build a platform like this for the wire feeder frame to be fixed once wire feeder frame is fixed then we have a clear picture of how the welding cable gets in and we also what you cannot see right now what we are not incorporated is a spring balancer where it holds the wire feed cable or the welding cable so that there is no twisting or drop down of the cable during the weld process. We are talking about the speeds of the system. 
x-axis does close to 100 mm per second, y-axis does close to 75 mm per second, z-axis runs at 30 mm per second. These are the ideal conditions for these, this particular model of uh, Cartesian welder or the profile welder what we are talking about. You might also see that we place the display stand onto the, onto the uh, operator's right hand side. Basically it is a movable stand. So depending on the convenience and the operator's ability to load and unload, they can place the stand wherever they want. The entire frame of the axis is our standard fabricated 100 by 100 square tube which we have kept uh, as standard throughout all our profile welder models because once we mount anything onto our uh, pillars we can start increasing the stroke like for example for one meter we have kept uh, two pillars at a distance of about 750 mm so we can add much higher pillars or we can add much more pillars and increase and increase the stroke length to about 2 meters or 3 meters similarly we can also plan for increasing our stroke on y axis by increasing the pillar width or adding through the along the width of the axis it is also easy to maintain such system as the entire system runs on rack and pinion the cleaning process is also easy uh, we have covered the entire system through sheet metal right now we have removed all the sheet metal for you to clearly understand how, how the system works and uh, the rack and pinion that we have used here is 1.5 module and the speed or the pinion that we have used here is about 32 teeth in regards to the advantages and disadvantages of this particular system profile welders are really good for uh, immediate, immediate adaptation you can simply start teaching the entire uh, weld zone, uh, weld profile and start welding immediately. The disadvantage here is for uh, such a small scale that is about 1 meter by half a meter stroke, the speeds cannot be increased from 100 mm to 200 mm as the strokes are less, the acceleration deceleration also increases. So basically the speed is really less in this in particular model. Let's move on to the welding of the entire frame, the weighing scale. Let us see how we started the entire process. I'll run you through a small video. So that, uh, before we start the video, this is a machine. This is at our facility where we are doing some trials because we are not allowed to take welding videos of the customer side. So this is one of our welding trial videos. The starting mode you can see is during the test frame, we have increased the speed of wire tape. We are trying to lower it down and bring it to a much lower uh, mm per minute or mm per second because currently the weld system or the profile welder is running at 10 mm per second. That's the second weld bead. You can see the third weld bead. You can also see the weld bead. It's a very thin bead. Now, what we're trying to weld is a width of about 20 mm. Very precise, it's close to 15 to 18 mm. And the thickness of weld bead is about 3 mm to 4 mm. Now, once we've finished the border welding, border welding in the sense the tube frame, the external frame. We are moving on to the internal base clamp plates. As you can see, through the base clamp plates, the weld bead is really, really good. As the base clamp plates have a thickness of about 4 to 5 mm, and we are welding the base clamp plates to the tube, which is having a thickness of 1.6 mm. So the deposition is really good. Now that's a 4 mm weld bead that you can see. The deposition rate is also consistent. You may also see that 
the amount of clamps that we've kept all through the fixture are at critical positions where we feel that the clamps or the components are tending to deviate during the weld. So based on that, we decide where to clamp and what is the kind of pressures that we can give. On the external frame, we've only used a cam-based fixture, cam-based clamping, where not much of uh, pressure is required or top clamp is required to hold the entire tube. The advantage of these clamps are that you can uh, immediately start clamping. The clamping time is very less if you compare uh, other kind of clamps. So the side clamps are mainly through cam profile and the top clamps are through Missimi clamps. So let me just run through, let me just fast forward most of you, most of the video because it's, it's, it's a really long video and it's a test model if you're doing. After finishing all the linear beads, we are also removing the side welds of these clamps. Side weld of these clamps are also very important. This is based on drawing. As of strength, only the two places, that is front and back, on both the sides, that is, that is more than enough. But the drawing demands for side welding as well. So going through the side weld, all the one, two, three, four, all four sides of side welding. Then, uh, now after we finish the top welding of the frame, we move to the internal weld beads. These are again critical because most of the internal weld beads have to be exactly at the joining face of it. Else, the tube uh, gets welded uh, inconsistently and there is a lot of blow holes. This piercing that happens. Um, and also if you see the finish of uh, the corner waves that we are doing if the corners are cut really uh, at a very precise angle you get a very beautiful weld but if the corners are a little bit of a deviation and then the kind of welding that you get goes for a toss so let me just fast forward to most of our welding base so that can finish the kind of value that you need here. <clears throat> so let me just in wind up and give you a preview of all that we have discussed today, guys, so that uh, we will just estimate what all we have discussed and what all we have planned so i'll just pause the video here let us move on to the costing now moving on to costing what we are discussing here is very important uh, as you can see we're discussing on the weighing scales costing where four axis now let us talk about inclusive inclusive costing there are about seven points. The first point that we are clear about is four axis motion control. You've, you've seen the kind of machine that we built. So on the machine front, you can see the X axis, Y axis, Z axis, as well as the rotary axis. So the entire motion control that is required to control this with a four inch touch display costs around $2,200. Then linear axis, all the linear axis I'm talking about, the physical axis, the mechanical parts. Uh, it's about three axes x y and z costs us two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars moving on to torch rotary axis assembly a axis costs us six hundred and eighty three dollars and torch and adapter assembly costs us hundred and seventy five dollars fixture assembly costs us thousand one hundred and ninety dollars then frame and sheet metal costs us nine hundred and fifty dollars safety system six fifty dollars now all said and done the kind of motors again used here are steppers and the power consumption is 400 watt hour only. Now, talking about the total project BOM costing, it's about $8,098.
non inclusive costing what's non inclusive costing guys labor company overhead consumables power consumption insulation packaging and forwarding all these things pertain to different cost levels at different areas or different locations and are always divided by the company that's producing it based on their criterions so that's it guys as of today thank you very much for watching this show see you guys next time around